Hey everyone, welcome to the Houston Zoo. We're so happy you tuned in today. We're gonna to see our cougars today. One of my favorite animals here at the zoo and I hope you'll like it too. Come on, let's go this way. So we have two cougars at the Houston Zoo. We have Haley and Shasta, and we're gonna call them down to the front right now, and we'll see them come down. Shasta, for all those that are U of H alumni or students, he's your mascot. So this is Shasta number six. He's been here at the zoo since 2011. And if you look up at the top, you can see he's coming down from the top of the exhibit. One of the things that's so cool about cougars is their ability to climb and also their camouflage. Look at him. Do you see him? He's going across the log there at the back of the exhibit, keeping a close eye on the keepers, and you're gonna see him just come down right to the front towards us. But everything he does is pretty dramatic, so he has to make it an appearance whenever he's walking this way to make sure that he's coming up here and he's gonna sneak around the corner. We should see him in just a few minutes. I see him coming down the rocks on the far side. And then we have another cougar out here that we'll see a little bit later. If you look all the way up at the top, do you see her coming down? That is Haley. So Haley is my all time favorite animal here at the zoo. And she's gonna come down right on top of this rock to see her keepers right up here. So you might hear me calling them cougars. So cougars go by a lot of different names. They go by cougar or puma or panther, or mountain lion. So they have more names than just about any other cat. And it's because they have such a large range. They start off all the way in Canada and go down through the United States, the Western United States, down into Central and South America. And depending on where they are in that range, they could be lots of different sizes. So Shasta that you're looking at right now he is a big male cougar, so he weighs about 150 pounds, and Haley is a little bit smaller. That's the other one that you saw out here. She's just a little over 100 pounds. What the keepers are going to do right now is offer them a few treats, and some of their favorite treats are goat's milk. You can see them squirting some of the goat's milk directly into their mouth. And then a little bit of meat also, because these guys are definitely carnivores. They eat meat and a little bit of diluted goat's milk just as a special treat. One of the things that you may see is his tongue is sticking out back and forth uh, like that. You could see his teeth. They have really big, really sharp teeth because these are one of the top predators that we have here in Texas and throughout the United States. So they will hunt after things like deer uh, or even th something as big as an elk. So when his tongue was sticking out there, you could see they do a pretty good job of licking that milk into their mouth and they have little barbs that may be kind of hard to see uh, that's on their tongue. Courtney, I don't know if you could get it uh, closer, but you may be able to see his tongue itself. And as it's sticking out, those little barbs that are sticking out on his tongue. That helps him to lick the meat right off of a bone or lick milk or even use it as a comb. It's kind of funny. Cats have a comb that is on their tongue. So they'll use that tongue with the little barbs called the pele and they will groom themselves to keep themselves nice and clean. So after they finish eating here a little bit later, you might see them grooming themselves uh, to get that milk that splashed up on their whiskers or their face or their paws. Oh, and there is Haley. Haley has a lot to say. So one of the things that's kind of neat about cougars is cougars uh, don't roar like some of the other big cats. In fact, they're big cat in size, but small cat in a lot of other ways. So they will make sounds like you heard Haley there with hissing or spitting, but they can also purr. They're one of the largest cats that can purr. So like the cheetah that you saw earlier, uh, in the week was purring. Cheetahs can purr too, and they can growl, and they can hiss, and they even make a screaming sound. So sometimes that cougar scream that you hear will carry far through the mountain areas and kind of ricochet off the rocks. 
and that can be heard as they're kind of announcing what their territories are. So I'm sure probably most of you here have never seen a cougar here in Texas, even though they do live in western part of the state. That's because they do a great job of avoiding people. So a lot of times they will uh, see people coming and they'll disappear far into the mountains or into the trees. So Elias, I hear uh, that you have a question here and it's how fast do they run? They are incredibly fast. So cougars can probably run about 40 miles an hour because you got to think some of the animals that they're chasing after are really fast too. So as they're hunting after white-tailed deer or rabbits, uh, even peccary that can be really fast, they have to run really fast. What they'll do is they'll crouch down and like you saw Shasta at the beginning, kind of moving up, stalking in a manner to get really close. They'll get within about uh, 40 yards, 50 yards of the animal and then they'll spurt out and they dash about 40 miles an hour. So one of the things that's kind of neat about Patch, you can see Haley up here on the rocks and you see her back foot and you see how it looks like she has a knee that is facing backwards. That's actually her heel. So cats are toe walkers. So they walk on their toes and their heels are up in the air. But they have, cougars have one of the largest hind legs out of the cat family, which allows them to jump really, really fast and uh, run fast too. So Bethany, you want to know if they live in groups. Normally, cougars are not a social animal. So most of the time you'll see them out in the wild. They are by themselves. They have seen females with cubs stay together for a pretty long time and kind of frequent the same areas. But most people consider them to be uh, solitary. Here, Haley and Shasta uh, get along fine. Although Haley has her uh, bubble, just like we are all social distancing right now. Haley has a social distance bubble too. And she tells Shasta exactly how close she could be to her. And if he gets closer than that, she'll hiss at him and he'll back away. Uh, so Pearson is wanting to know if they are endangered. So cougars or mountain lions as a whole are not endangered, but there are parts of the population that are extremely endangered. So there is a subspecies or a type of cougar that lives in Florida and they call them Florida panthers. Uh, that there's not very many at all. So those are definitely highly endangered, but cougars throughout the rest of the range are not. Although we don't really know how many there are out in the wild. Donald and Jeremiah is why do they have whiskers? So cats have these great whiskers and you'll see that on all cats and it sticks out to the side of their face and they use that as they're traveling through the dark or through tight canyons or through a forest if their whiskers can fit through something, usually their whole body can fit through. So that's just an extra thing they have to help guide their way uh, through the habitat as they're walking. Allura, what do they prey on? They eat so many different kinds of animals. So they can eat anything as small as a rat all the way up to something as big as an elk. So most of the prey is probably something the size of like a white-tailed deer or a peccary, small pig, rabbit. Uh, and it just depends on where they are in, in their range. The cougars that are up really far north and south hunt after bigger animals. The cougars that you find in the tropical areas usually hunt after smaller animals. Are they related to cheetahs or jaguars? That is a question that we have from Destiny. That's a great question, Destiny. They are not really that closely related to jaguars, although they're very similar in size in a lot of ways, but they are more closely related to cheetahs. So cheetahs uh, that you saw on one of our early uh, broadcasts also is a big cat that can purr. And believe it or not, once upon a time, there were cheetahs in North America. So cougars and jaguarundis and cheetahs are uh, all animals that are somewhat similar or close, kind of like a, a cousin to each other. We definitely want to say hi to all of our University of Houston fans out there. Go Cougs! This is Shasta, your mascot right here. So Shasta's been here since 2011 and this is Shasta number six. And we appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. Cougars are definitely one of our favorites because they're also our kind of local hometown favorite football team, right? Go Cougs! Vanessa, what is their favorite toy? 
Danielle uh, may also want to talk about uh, some of their favorite enrichment items. Hello, everybody. So, yes. Danielle, I'm back. We actually brought out one of their favorite toys. You can see they've done quite a number on this. This is a hard plastic toy. It's called a Holy Moly. And this is just one example of the type of enrichment toys that we put out on exhibit for all of our cats, including our cougars. Today, we put out fresh produce. Thank you very much to our animal nutrition team. We do that the first of every month. Like Kevin said, they're carnivores, so they don't really want to eat an apple or a sweet potato, but we cut it up into pieces and scatter it around so it's something different for them to sniff and look at. We also put out another scent, one of their favorites, ocelot urine. So we are lucky enough to have two ocelots in our collection, and we collected <laughs> some of their urine and we put that around the exhibit as well. Scent is very important to all cats including our mountain lions. And real quick, just want to give a little shout out to my nephew Desmond. Hi Des, I love you. Jessica would like to know, can cougars jump high? Yes, they can, Jessica. Cougars have the ability to leap about 16 feet straight up in the air. So as you look at our exhibit, you will notice there is mesh up top because they are excellent climbers and leapers. And they can jump about 45 feet across. So that's about the length of a school bus. You'll notice they have longer hind legs, very powerful hind leg muscles, um, longer than their forelegs. And that's part of what gives them such incredible leaping power. So something that is kind of interesting about cougars is cougars are not bred in zoos. There is a need to take on orphan animals uh, whenever something happens to their mom out in the wild. And that is how both Haley and Shasta came to us. So Haley uh, was born in Idaho. We're not sure what happened to her mom uh, in the wild, but a uh, man and his son were driving down the road and they saw this baby cougar on the side of the road near some bags of trash. And he took it to Idaho Fish and Game and they found out we had a space to bring uh, Haley in. And so we brought her here and she was, has been here since she was a cub. With Shasta, he actually was uh, found in Washington State. Uh, there was someone that, act, that shot the mother. Uh, the friend turned this person in and said, hey, I don't think that was a good thing. And uh, Washington Fish and Game went out and they found two cougars right away. That was Shasta's brothers. And they couldn't find Shasta for a while. And then he went out and he went out with a dog to help track it and he started making these chirping sounds that mother cougars will make to the babies and he chirped back and they were able to find Shasta and then he came here. So it's very unfortunate what happened to the, the mother but we we're so thankful to get Shasta here very early on so we could provide a great life for him. Adrian's wanting to know, are mountain lions the same as cougars? Yeah, they are. Isn't it crazy? They have so many common names. So mountain lions, cougar, panther, puma, that's all referring to the same cat. Ava, if they lose a tooth, will it grow back? So just like us, uh, whenever we are young, we go through a process where we're losing our baby teeth and we're getting our adult teeth in. Cougars do the same thing. So whenever they're young, they have baby teeth and they'll shed those and get adult teeth, but it only happens one time. So after that, they don't regrow their teeth uh, like a shark would. And Justin was wanting to know, how long do they live? So they can live quite a long time. Usually around mid teens is an old cougar. So Haley at uh, 10 years old and Shasta at eight years old, they're kind of middle-aged right now. So uh, they're uh, about like a 30-year-old, I guess, or 40. What is middle-aged? I don't even know. Maybe 40 or 45. So they're just finishing up uh, some of the treats that you could see on the ground and they're using their sense of smell to find those extra meatballs that are there and seeing if there was anything else that was dropped in uh, this area. And with the two of them there, you could probably see the difference in size. Male cougars are quite a bit bigger than what females are. So Shasta weighs about 50 pounds more than Haley does. Michelle, you're wanting to know what are they related to? 
So what are they related to as far as other cats? Uh, is they're related to cheetahs and jaguarundis. They're not really that closely related to anything. They're, they're kind of in their own family. Uh, Puma concolor is their uh, Latin name, but they are a little more closely related to cheetahs and uh, jaguarundis. If you guys want to get a little bit more up close and personal with our mountain lions, even though you can't quite come and visit us yet, you do have a variety of options on our website. You have the opportunity to symbolically adopt many of our animals, including Haley and Shasta. And we do also sell animal art. So we paint with our cats. They'll go ahead and put their paws in paint and put it on a canvas. So go ahead and check out our website, HoustonZoo.org, if you'd like more information. So Amanda is wanting to know how do they hunt or stalk their prey? So whenever we first walked up to their habitat, you probably saw they were hiding on the rock work in the back and they almost were invisible. They do such a good job with camouflage with them blending in to the rock work in this exhibit. It's really hard to see. So they, whenever they're stalking, they get as low to the ground as possible. They like to keep lots of other rocks and trees and bushes in, in between them and the other animal, and they're very patient. So they will wait an inch closer, just a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. When they're within uh, 30 or 40 yards or less, they'll take that opportunity to jump out when the animal's not looking and chase them down and they're really efficient predators. So if they catch up to something, they'll usually trip it and then they'll jump on it uh, pretty quickly. So they are some amazing carnivores and they do such a great job of hiding and stalking. Catherine wants to know, what are we feeding them? So there was a couple of different things that we were giving them. One was a meat and it's a commercially prepared diet specifically for big cats like this. And we were also giving them goat's milk. So goat's milk is uh, something that's a special treat. And if you could look in there, oh, we also have fish in there too. You know what? They like eating all kinds of meat. So they are definitely a carnivore. If there's meat or if it was meat or if it came from an animal that, uh, then they like it. So goat's milk, eggs, fish, meat, those are all some of their favorite treats. Kim is wanting to know what the size of their enclosure is. So if you look at the habitat that we have right here, you can see one of the things that's really important for cougars is to have a lot of vertical space. Since they're so great at climbing and maneuvering around, uh, the exhibit is over 25 feet tall and they can get all the way up to the very top of it and jump around on the trees and the branches. And sometimes they even stalk animals like squirrels or birds if they happen to fly in there. So they can definitely maneuver around their exhibit. And even one of the things that's pretty neat here is they can jump on a cave that has a glass window at the top. So if you ever by the zoo and you see them laying up there, you could walk into that cave, look up, and you could see their belly as they're laying on top of that glass, right on top of where you are. Avani, can they roar? So no, that is something that cougars can't do. Like other big cats, jaguars, leopards, lions, tigers, they can all roar, but they can't purr. Cougars can purr, but they can't roar, and they also make a screaming sound. But the general rule of thumb is, if a cat can purr, it can't roar. If it can roar, then it can't purr. So the cougars that we have here, we have Haley and Shasta, and Haley's about uh, 10 years old, and Shasta is eight years old. And uh, Haley came to us from Idaho, Shasta from Washington, and they each weigh over 100 pounds. Haley's about 105 pounds, and Shasta's about 155 pounds. Kinsey is wanting to know how long are their claws? Their claws aren't really that long, like you would think of a bear's claws that really stick out from their paws, but they're incredibly sharp. So one of the things that cats do in order to keep their claws nice and sharp is they're retractable. So whenever they're walking, their claws usually aren't out. But whenever they put their paw up on the mesh or if they're reaching out for something, you'll see the claws stick out and they are like needles and they have a strong curve to them. And so they keep those claws nice and sharp. So whenever they are hunting something, they have those sharp uh, weapons at the end of their paws. There's a 
close up of Shasta. You can always tell what Shasta is up to or thinking depending on what his tail is doing. Sometimes when he's acting a little bit mischievous, you'll see his tail bouncing around back and forth. And uh, whenever that happens, sometimes he's thinking about what can I do to stalk you uh, or to uh, jump or surprise you. So he's looking for that meatball that is on the rock work and it's hidden on the side there. Oh, there you go, he found it. And he's just gonna lick it right off the side of the rock that he is on there. And look at his arms. You see his arms and his shoulders, how powerful it is, all of those muscles. They are so, so strong. So a cougar that weighs 150 pounds could take down something the size of an elk. They are just such incredible predators. Do they come in other colors based on habitat? So the cougar's Latin name is Puma Concolor. So it's basically a cat of one color. And you don't find that with too many other cats, but lions that you have in Africa are kind of have that one color and cougars do, do also. And they can have different shades, but this is basically what you see with cougars is the color you see here. Do they mate for life? That's a question from Amy. And Amy, that's a great question. No, normally they do not. So male cougars and female cougars will set up a range. And a lot of times the range for the male will overlap that of several females. And if the female likes the male enough, uh, she will have him around for a while. And as soon as she thinks that he needs to move on, she will have him move along his way. Jenny's wanting to know how long are their tails? So I, the tail is probably about two and a half to three feet long, but it is really used when they're running. So one of the things they could use uh, their tail for is as they're jumping or climbing or moving through branches or logs. Uh, Haley, Good girl. I love that hiss, don't you? It is so crazy. But they will use that tail as kind of like a tight rope walker uses a pole for balance. So it helps them uh, to keep their balance and coordination. It also helps them turn if they're running really, really fast. They'll use that tail kind of like a rudder in that case. So, hello. I was uh, playing camera woman for a hot second there. But I know Kevin was talking earlier about how he loves to come out and talk about the cougars. They're some of his favorites. I have a big place in my heart for cougars as well. A lot of us come to the zoo because we want to see the exotics, right? We want to see the lions and the tigers and the elephants. Don't get me wrong. I love them. But if you're looking for an opportunity or a species where you can help out, we have cougars right here in Texas, Western Texas. They have the largest geographic range of any terrestrial mammal in the western hemisphere so that's a mouthful right but basically cougars are found all over like kevin said earlier north america south america central america and they can live in any environment deserts swamps forests my native home california they have the most famous mountain lion in the world p22 he lives in griffith park right in the middle of los angeles and that is a big urban area, just like Houston, that is working to live alongside wildlife. They're building the largest wildlife overpass in the world. So as you find yourself at home needing something to Google, check that out. But a lot of people are afraid when I say that we have cougars nearby. Just so you know, you are way more likely to perish in an airplane crash than you are through a mountain lion attack. They're very shy and they don't wanna be around us. As you can hear, Haley's got a lot of attitude, but research has been done here in the United States. They'll actually play sound recordings out in the forest and they play frogs, mountain lions don't react. They play human voices and the mountain lions split. So even though they are a very large, and don't get me wrong, very dangerous predator, I want people to know that there are many ways that we can cohabitate with our local wildlife. All right, guys, we want to thank you so much for joining in with us uh, today, particularly everyone from U of H. We're so happy that you guys were able to tune in and see Shasta here at the zoo. Uh, like Danielle was saying, some of our favorite animals here, and we're so happy to have the U of H mascot right here at the Houston Zoo. 
One of the things that I would like you all to do right now is go to HoustonZoo.org. We have an emergency zoo fund that is set up and we need your help. So if you can log on, go to the emergency zoo fund and whatever you can give would be great so we can continue the great work that we're doing here at Houston Why our gates are shut down to the public. We hope to see you guys soon and join in tomorrow for our next Facebook Live. Thank you guys. Thank you.